Okay. Once they wait until they give you the go ahead. You hear you hear it now? Except that 
any two vertices can be joined by at most one edge. And the digress, which has been term directed graph, means that um, while it is a multigraph, each edge on the multigraph um, is in that directed from the first vertex to the second, meaning that travel is going in that direction. So graph theory, you can take it the physical situation with this bridge set up on the river and turn it into a simple mathematical diagram. Okay. So we're going to represent the river as a diagram and all the parts. Um, the beginning and, and all the stops along the river are going to be vertices on the graph. And um, the start with zero and then the last one. So the edge AB exists if A is at the most times the amount of 4B. Essentially, what we said before in our function that any two um, vertices are at most length and not apart. And the river you call solvable if you have a path from the beginning to the end. Alright, so when we're considering the river, there are essentially two types of bottlenecks or conditions of heating flow. The first bottleneck is imposed by a river geometry, which is when you have two stops on the river that are a large distance apart, and that limits the number of folks that can flow down the river in a day. And the second is imposed by a time restriction. Because we require boats to travel for at least six days down the river, sometimes boats have to slow down from the speed they could be going in order to spend six days on the river. And we note that in any problem with circuit, bottleneck determines the maximum river flow. Right. And so in order to consider these two bottlenecks, we first remove the conditions from the problem. So the first, the first condition we remove is the distance requirement. So essentially that's equivalent to stating that the river, the stops on the river are uniformly distributed and that both can travel from any stop to a later stop. And what we get find then is that why both can travel down the river. More than why both not travel down the river because when we, if we had more than five boats traveling down the river, there would be multiple boats at one stop. And in order to analyze this case, we use generating functions of this form. And the first term of the generating function here moves both along the river. And the second term here moves both from the start of the river onto unoccupied vertices. And so, that's one kind of thing that we have in the The second kind of thing we have is when uh, we ignore time, and that means that a boat has to travel at most 100 miles in a day. However, it can end any number of days. Um, so we're going to let K, as they did before, be the minimum at the grade of a stop, which has no stop support at the end of the river. So if the stop is the least. Uh, possible maximum stops that we do it. And this, um, we can show that at most the boats can finish the river in a day. And this is that we give each vertex of the river graph uh, unit weight. And we construct a flow network diagram with no splitting and then we apply to the map flow and cut there and we'll show that that means to show that at most the boats can finish the river. So, calculate the case, we just take a look at our river and we See that this stop here is the end set. That's not the most set. This stop connects to the end, and this stop does not have any stop before it comes to the end. So that's in our set. So these four stops here are in our set when we look at the minimum value of those, which is one. So K is going to be one. And we're going to look at um, how to find max flow when we there to determine that K is the maximum flow along the river. We have this representation of the river here. And we use no splitting, which is a system where we take each vertex along the river and we split it into two vertices, where the first has the in degree of the original vertex, and the second has the out degree of the original vertex. And there is a edge connecting to the first to the second. Um, now we're going to apply the mean cut theorem and see that this is back to the minimum cut. We're going to remove that edge and that there is no flow from the beginning of the river to the end of the river. We need that um, 
Canadian pronouncement flow in the river. And considering these two problems gives us a better understanding of the general problem, because as the general problem is more constrained than these two problems, any schedule that's valid for the general problem must also be valid for these two less constrained problems. And as such, we can use that to find the maximum number of boats that can travel down in six, a six day period. And this allows us to divide the river into two cases. The first where y is less than or equal to 6, and the second where y is greater than 6. In the first case, in the first case, we have that the travel time restriction is stricter than the flow restriction. And because of this, the max flow in six days is y boat, which means that considering the number of six day periods when boats can actually finish going down the river, we have that 29 y boats can finish in a season. And to solve this problem, we use generated constants. So first we consider the case where all stops are uniformly distributed, and that means that we can define a distance between all of the stops along the river. And that gives us, again, this is a general form of the generating function. This mu represents the amount of boats moving in a day. And essentially what this does is it sends the floor of y over 6 boats down the river whenever n minus 1 is not multiple of 6. And it will also send more boats every 6 days to make up the difference when y is not. And we can show that this schedule is legal as boats take it always take six days to finish by this inequality. And we can also show that boats cannot travel more than 96 miles in a day using this inequality. And we can also show that this schedule is optimal as Y boats travel down the river in a six day time period for this schedule, meaning that 29 Y boats travel down the river. And in order to generalize the non-uniformly state stop, you know, because the previous schedule may not work as it may send more boats down the river in a day than the previous schedule allows. So what we do is we redefine these sub n here in such a way that it only varies by one between any day. So it's either four out of y over six or four out of y over six plus one. And we can again show that the schedule is legal as both take six days to finish. And we can show that boats never travel more than eight stops. And we can also show that the schedule is optimal because in six days, why would you travel down the river? And then in, 20, in the 180 day season, 29 why would you travel down the river? Okay, so our second case is where the why is greater than six, okay? So in this case, the restriction on flow geometrically is more interesting than the travel time. So the max flow in six days would be six k And the work of this we're going to use grad theory. So, um, we're going to divide the river into subgraphs where um, so that exactly one boat can finish each day after the first six. Um, and so, no birds being any of these subgraphs are shared except the start of the end. And the larger set of possible subgraphs that are still solvable problems uh, is, is exactly the same subgraphs. And you can put the set of size k um, by removing paper of the paper of the from the river in each subgraph. So, um, speaking about efficiency of this uh, system, boats can complete the river in this day because the river is printed at the time, so it's not a consideration here. And the boats will always travel over 96 miles a day because the river is only 225 miles long. So if the boat cannot finish the first six days, the boat can only finish for 174 of the 180 days. And in case of it finished finish for a day, then we had that 174 of the boat can finish the All right, so we'd like to acknowledge all the people who helped us with this, Charlie Stoddard, our mentor and at the XL Energy Foundation in 1984 alumni who sponsored my participation in research, the Kinder Morgan Foundation and Sid Stanley for sponsoring Ben's research, and also Nicholas Corianopoulos, our advisor and instructor at the program, as well as Crystal Michael, our advisor coordinator and brain assistant. Oh, let's thank Lori Ball, 
the SSI program director, um, who's going to be the this race, and um, the math and science teaching institute. Um, there, also uh, Maurice Wood and Anthony Nadra, um, Karen Allman, and uh, all the other SSI and math staff here. In addition to Megan Jones, who created this lovely poster. So what we have is that sometimes there are folks can always so what we have is that at times we have this geometry, right? And so sometimes that means that if the boats weren't constrained by geometry, they could travel down the river faster. And sometimes we have that the requirement that boats travel down the river in six days is what causes boats to travel slower, whereas the restraint on geometry doesn't really affect them as much. So if we have, say, a river with the facts that are reasonably uniformly distributed like such, we'll get that the geometry constraint is pretty low because there's not really a huge distance between any of these two, between any of these dots, and the time restraint is going to be the greatest possible. Yeah. Okay. Oh, are there any that your research would be most applicable to as other Yes, the question was if there are any um, rivers in the real world that our research can be applied to. And non specific rivers, really, um, it's a very generic, uh, perfect river. Yeah. Um, so I One thing our situation does not consider is rivers branching or joining. So if you consider a river like the Nile, where it's pretty much just straight, like such. But if you have a river where it branches and you can possibly end in two places, our analysis doesn't consider that kind of problem. Alright, Adam? Oh. I want to mention, like, if you said this is a river, right? Yeah. Do you guys consider, like, a flow? Like, just which way we can go to the river flow? Um, we assume that's the reason for the diagraph representation. We assume both can only move with the current of the river. Is because that's really the direction we want to be moving if you're on a river. And hence we have that travel is directed in only one direction down the river. So if we're gonna um what are the days of like time or what are the days of days? What if you don't have like twenty nine people like that are gonna go rafting because your face can still work if there's like Changes between the boats, like half the boats. Well, we assume that we're here to maximize the flow, that um, there will be people that fill the river. However, if there aren't, we can use the same schedule optimally. However, uh, we will not get the same maximum flow uh, out there. If, there might actually be situations where you can still achieve the maximum flow because if we go back to this river, and say you didn't have, like you're missing one group of tourists, say. What I would do is I would send tourists to all of these farther stops here, so then when you move, next, move the next day, this hole in the river, if you will, is closer to the beginning of the river. So at that point, it might still be possible that the distance between the beginning of the river and that hole is less than 96 miles, and you could still send another group and say, the group couldn't make it to this particular travel date, but had to book a day later because of flight like, schedules or whatever. Thank you. Thank you.